everyone. <laughs> um, we're back and uh, a very special reach out to a, a very good artist friend of mine who's going through some difficulties. Um, this is for you. Um, right, Seascape time again. Um, and this time we have a horizon, so I'm going to have to cheat to begin with uh, and use a T square. But first, I shall have to move that clamp a little bit. Let's just put, up, put that up there for now. I'll just quickly do this and then I'll explain what I'm doing it and why etc. Okay, so uh, let's do a I've just done a very rudimentary um, sketch drawing um, duh, 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 let's do it there which I have next to me and I shall follow that to some degree, just as a guideline, of course. Right, that should do it. And I can put my T square away again for the duration. Alrighty, hey, wait, let's have a let's have a gander. So um, this was just a, a kind of a memory that came up of um, a trip I did. When was it? Twenty. 20, uh, was it 2019? Um, up, up the coast from Cape Town, um, driving up and stopped in East London, stopped overnight in East London one night, um, which is a place that, uh, I spent some child some some time as a child um, and my dad was transferred um, I started school in East London in fact at a little school called Beaconhurst and uh, anyway so I stopped overnight then and when I when I was setting out in the morning early and I drove along the, I drove along the, uh, the coastline for a little, little bit, sort of south of the harbour mouth, and uh, there was this very rocky stretch, and it was very, a uh, very sort of still, still calm morning, um, and yet, kind of, kind of overcast. Well, it had set in above, but perhaps down towards the very horizon line. Um, well, there was a little bank of clouds down there, so you couldn't really see the sunrise itself. Um, so very much this steely grey ocean greeted me. Uh, and I'm just going to depict that. Um, so... There was no beach, there was just rocks. Um, well, there is no beach, there are just rocks. Um, <laughs> nothing's changed in the three years since I was there, <laughs> I'm sure, with regards to the coastline. Um, so I just wanted to depict that, that sort of steely grey mood 
and it's always a fascinating thing the ocean ever-changing moods <laughs> one might in certain circumstances you might I, th I think the medical profession might diagnose the ocean as bipolar, excessively so, <laughs> and yet it seems perfectly natural, doesn't it? Um, we're all too ready to, to, to accept diagnoses, diagnoses, is that the right expression, diagnoses, of of certain mental conditions etc for ourselves and yet aren't these things perfectly natural they don't need treating the ocean doesn't need treating nature is freakishly unpredictable isn't it And yet, we tend to term the human equivalent of our moods, our natural moods, and emotions, and what have you, um, as abnormal. Something that needs fixing with chemicals and drugs and what have you. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. And perhaps we should be taking lessons from from nature more. More. Um, in instances like this, where a change, a change is, is seen as something wonderful. Something different is seen as beauty, iridescence, changing light. It's a reflection of a beautiful soul, isn't it? And uh, I kind of think that's what this is about. This is the reason for this piece today. going to go a little bit above that now. The What I need a T square for. See, so that's this is the thing that I love about about the ocean and why it's why it fascinates. So many artists, <clears throat> seascape after seascape after seascape, um, and nature 
you know, it just, we see so much of nature in, in all depictions and renderings. Always have. Because there's something captivating about it. And something special about its unpredictability. What's different about us? <laughs> yes, we can be fickle, we can be moody, we can be, oh, we can swing from pillar to post, and yet, isn't that just a wonderful thing? Doesn't need to be traumatic. So today I'm just, well, get going as far as I'm meant to go, <laughs> uh, and in setting up this, primarily the composition, uh, in black and white, right, but let's just... Oh, bugger off, bugger off, let me alone. If there's anything unnatural about nature, it's mosquitoes. Bastards. Right. Let me put these clamps. Oh wait. First let me finish this part here. And I can put the clamps on and then I can raise this thing up a little bit and so I can work to the bottom. You know me and working to the bottom of the page. By now. Just kind of setting up this this moody sky. And also this is a smaller piece as you'll notice, it's half the size of the of the one I was working on last week. And I'm just kind of gauging progress here uh, 
in terms of size for a, a piece I'm going to be doing for a demonstration this coming weekend for the North Coast Artist, Artists Group. Um, and I'm going to be doing a seascape for them. I'm just gauging the time, the timeline, um, and I'll be doing it probably, probably smaller than this. Not a great deal, but I'll need to work quite quickly. Um, so this is not a particularly quick piece um, because there's a fair amount of detail. Whereas that, with that piece, I'll be doing a a a very expressive. Um, kind of waves and whatever you predominantly. Um, anyway, I just just sort of seeing how this works for, in terms of time. Not to rush anything, um, but yeah, so it's. What am I looking for here? Right, let's try this. Should do it. My little SpongeBob Junior. Okay, I think what I want to do right now, right now, is to um, use a little bit of, just a little bit of white, just to define the crumbling wave. Well, not quite new, but shortly. Um, I don't know what that accent was, but it was terrible. So this is Spongebob Junior, and this is Spongebob Senior. Um, they're both used generally with paint, um, to spread paint with. But here, they seem to work perfectly well as gentle um, charcoal spreaders. <laughs> In this instance, oh yes, white, 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 white. There. I need to stock up. Right, so we've got stuff going on over here. I just want a very 
in a very rudimentary way, I want to depict where the, the ocean meets the rocks. And of course, our general sort of impression of where this wave is. Kinda there, kinda there. Um, right. So I just had a very short time um, to uh, just explore this particular coastline for a bit in the morning before, I, as I was leaving, heading, setting out from East London to head back to Durban. Um, and as I'd only, it was literally a stopper, a night, an, an overnighter. So I arrived the previous evening quite late well it was kind of kind of sunset so I didn't get to go out and explore or anything like that and, and I wasn't in the mood to anyway I'm quite tired from driving up from from Plett and um, so it was just this setting out in the morning everything was quiet and and uh, kind of took the coastal road and then wound up back through city, the city to join up with the N1 again and head out. Um, so but it was just nice to, I stopped at a couple of places, a couple of spots along the way and, and just took it in. And it was a lovely, cool, calm morning to start to the day.
And when you see, you know, I've done a number of um, seascapes that where the where the the weather is quite inclement. Inclement. <laughs> And Clement, not sure what the pronunciation is, um, where it's quite moody. Um, so, you know, I, I change it up from time to time because I can, <laughs> because it's normal and natural to do so. And and you know, as I was saying, it is perfectly natural and normal to be changing all the time because that's what nature is all about really it's about change and nature yes can be very very unpredictable we have but we have you know in terms of the on a, th on a th three dimen third dimensional level, we have incredible uh, vacillation at the moment um, in Eastern Europe. Everything's upside down. But that's not, that's, that's, where it's taken to the unnatural it shouldn't be we shouldn't we shouldn't be having wars conflict hatred oppression and all of these things they aren't natural I'm not sure where my thinking is going yet so I'm just I'm just rambling And yet, I suppose if we have a look at, if we take a, a page from nature's, nature's Mother Earth's book, we see that everything works in harmony. Fluctuation, even extremely challenging situations are are natural, are part of the natural order of things. There's no ego. There's no ego in nature. Anywhere, anywhere, there's no ego. Um, there is emotion. Most definitely, there are feelings. Um, if you take, if you take trees, for example, or, or grass even, the, the, the smell of, and I only learned this recently, incidentally, the smell of cut grass is, is the, um, is a smell, is a, is a, is a, is a, um, a scent given off by the grass, uh, a, 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 a scent of distress. That's what it is. Um, in forests, um, and, and it's been it's been scientifically proven, measured, um, that because trees are all organisms as well just as much as everything else is and 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 they communicate so uh, when a tree is cut down or when there's a fire perhaps that message is communicated um, the stress goes out things change the moods change um, it's natural that's emotion animals Animals express emotion, um, love, fear, um, distress, etc. Um, uh, mourning. 
very, very much. They don't express, however, ego. Ego doesn't come into it at all. Why do we have to have that? Because that's our undoing, really, isn't it? That's what... Ego is what leads to greed and strife in this world. It's been there for as long as we've been around in various forms. And what I find quite incredible is when it's when it's uh, when this greed is perpetrated in God's name. Now, <laughs> God is nature. Nature has no ego. Nature has no greed. So what on earth is that all about then? Uh, that's why I don't subscribe to religion very much. Of course, what's going on in Ukraine at the moment is not religiously orientated. It's or whatever it is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't profess to be any kind of an expert in, on on the situation. But what I do know is that it's unnatural. It's not. It's not part of the natural order of things. And this needs to change, and it will change ultimately. There will be extreme change in this world. Um, in time to come. Let's just put these clamps back on again. Just put that up here. Right. Let's not get too. Right. Let's just be careful that doesn't fall off. Right. Um, Just let me concentrate for a wee bit here. Yeah? Yeah, so there's these lovely rocky foreground, but there's a there's a silveriness, a, <laughs> a 
quality of mercury. Let's call it mercur mercurial, shall we? Seeing as we're depicting mood here. Yes, that silveriness to the uh, to the water gives gives it that particular mercury-like glint. And of course, then showing up the rocks is very black and and dangerous looking. And again, it's just I'm just working in a rudimentary fashion to establish to establish the goings on here. But a lot of the coastline down here is like this, all the way up to, tra to the old Trans Sky, um, east, the, the stretch of the Eastern Cape. Lots of wonderful stretching um, rocks, rock pools. Wonderful. As a kid, I can remember Kids Beach, further south of here. Um, it was a place we used to go to sometimes on weekends and spend the day. Um, have lunch and so on. Hugely exciting. Wonderful. I mean as a as a child of four or five years old. Um just yeah lots and lots and lots of rock pools to play in and little fishes to see and toddling about here with my little bucket and net and what have you springs to mind and and wonderful shells I mean I, I, I don't know what it's like what the beaches are like down there now I would imagine it's very different we're talking and we're talking I'm talking here about the early 70s but the beaches were just oh goodness me uh, full of of shells wonderful shells i uh, you know that i used to pick up every time loads and loads and loads of these things um and you know whole little sea urchins um just that 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 little um bun that little greenish um bun thing with the with a hole in the middle, hollow, like a, like a donut. Um, still got a couple of those here, I think. Um, starfish, gosh, you name it, but the most incredible shells. And I don't know if it's like that anymore, much, like, much as it is anywhere along the coastline now. They're all gone. In the name of commerce. <laughs> There's the toppy. Just gone 4.30. And of course it's getting darker now in the mornings as we head towards autumn or fall depending where you're from. And this is the southern hemisphere, of course, so opposite to the opposite um, seasons to the northern hemisphere.
So this this is all the, these kind of line work type details. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm hardly in, hardly even using much in terms of line at the moment. I'm just literally filling in. But it's this kind of work that takes time. So um, when I said I'm I'm just doing this as an exercise, as a timeline scenario, it's it's not really about that because I've got a lot more time-consuming stuff in this in this piece, especially in this area, to cover as opposed to as opposed to this this kind of space here where the wave itself is will take much less time in the greater scheme of things but uh, I'm just it's just a very rough guide for me um, at this stage and I'm just just in terms of working what size I should work with it. so it's more about the the, 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 the ease of use um, for demonstrating than it is for time. Oh, scusi. Mm. Yeah, so um, I have the the basis for this piece now, and tomorrow I shall introduce color I might even complete this piece tomorrow It'd be quite interesting to see if I do, if I do manage to get through it um, but let's see no pressure to as as always um, I don't like to place myself under any pressure to complete a piece and I'll let it go for as long as it needs to and that's the most important factor about about these pieces is just I, I have to let them just be So we've got this this wave 
Um, I suppose, you know, the beach, uh, the shoreline is right up here, kind of standing back here. Um, so that would be kind of mid-break and then this, the rest, the, the waves kind of, uh, at higher tide kind of break over these rocks and what have you. So, so that would be, that would be mid-break over there and back-break is somewhere further up. But, um, so this wave is, is busy rolling in. Um, there's another one that's just kind of splashed up against the, against the, the rock shelf. Um, which kind of ends fairly abruptly, so I would imagine that, that, that the waves really crash up against these, this rock line over here where it ends. So kind of what I'm illustrating here is the, is the fact that despite the mood, um, there is always the same progress. There's always a balance, a harmony. Whether these waves are, whether the ocean is smooth, there's hardly any waves, or whether they giant rollers coming in, there's still that procession, there's still that natural order of things. That can be that can be gauged and worked with accordingly. Um, if there's a if there's a cyclone brewing, yes, it, it can create havoc. But at the same time, we prepare ourselves mentally. Um, Um, in terms of logistics and so on and so forth. So nature prepares itself for these things. You see when there's uh, certain seismic events, nature starts to change. Animals start to start to behave differently. They sense these things long before our um, before our gauges and gadgets pick up on these on these happenings, these events. Just um, sprung to mind um, recently when there was that um, volcanic eruption in. Uh, Togo was it um, in the Pacific um, and uh, there was the, there was a, a, a story I, I saw about a turtle that had been had a tracking device uh, attached to it and it had headed out from the Great Barrier Reef it was heading out in the direction of the of the uh, Pacific Islands um, and as it approached, I think three days before the uh, the eruption took place, um, and it had it, 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 it probably swum one and a half to two thousand kilometers, and suddenly did a U-turn. Interesting. Um, nature is plugged in all of the time, so always making accommodation for for certain for certain events and occurrences and what have you birds are the same all nature is the same we need to learn to tap into what's natural as well we need to follow instinct which we don't do we've forgotten how to do that We need to be more accepting of the natural order of things. We need to be accepting of of the ups and downs, and 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 be able to be 
in alignment with that. Okay, I'm talking too much now. Rambling on too much. So I shall leave it for now. For the last few minutes. Eight, nine minutes. Well, I'll leave the, the mental meanderings out for, for the time being anyway. my eraser a little bit here. Yeah, this is needs to this needs to come up a little bit. So this piece now, because we have an overcast sky, the whole the whole lighting effect changes with this piece. The color, the 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 hues, Huey Lewis in the news, the the, uh, the whole color spectrum kind of shifts a little bit like a kaleidoscope. Um, so we've got in this piece predominantly the greens, the um, these um, lilacs. Sorry, yes, the lilacs, um, as well as the turquoises, as well as the, 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 the that wonderful jade green that I love to depict so so much. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that aspect of this piece. Um, I'll also perhaps use be using a little bit of acrylic with this with this piece as well. So just to just to top off the highlights and so on. For now, I have certainly I certainly feel that I've got the essence of of the composition and setting the tone for the mood of this piece.
Yes. Just a straightforward seascape, this one. Um, not a macro image, just a nice, gentle. straightforward seascape. Relaxing on the eye, relaxing for me. <laughs> Mind you, when I relax too much, then I talk too much. So, brace yourselves. I still haven't heard another another bird besides the toppy as yet. I think I might have heard some hardy dogs earlier on, but they I think that they were just disturbed perhaps. I often do that. Um, but other than that, it's still only 10 to 5. So still dawn itself is only still nearly an hour away. I'm not sure what time dawn is here today. Um, but yes, Toppy is on steroids. Full tonk. course the, the this whole area is covered with um, well obviously it's rocks but I mean there's there's also pools of, of water left by the preceding waves that have crashed over the top here um, perhaps when that tide is a bit higher so there's these lovely pools of reflective light so reflecting the grey, steely grey sky above. Etc, etc, you know how it goes. Right, I think we got, we're out of time now, but made great progress with this piece today. So thank you for joining. Uh, and... Uh, Thank you for bearing with me <laughs> my mental meanderings. Um, I do tend to process a lot as I go. It's all part of observation and and um, and mood and emotion and everything that goes into depiction of stuff. So my uh, storyline of life, I guess. So uh, anyway, um, have a fantastic day further. Oodles and oodles of toodles. And uh, do be good, be kind, be gentle, be caring, be loving. And, uh, and uh, you, the, you know who's, I'll chat to you later. <laughs> anyway, take it easy, folks, and uh, do tune in to the tube again tomorrow um, as I continue with this, working with this, with this seascape. Take care, folks. Bye. Don't forget. Doodle.